young adults pastor. I think it was Sam's young adults pastor at one stage. Yeah. Look at the results of that. <laughs> that, turned out right. that turned out right. I'm the religion. You got it right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. And, um, and then after doing that for seven years or six years, I burnt out. And then finally, the doctor said, You will die this year. Like, and then so after seven, God, my whole life, doing good. Not like doing good because it's the law. I was just doing good because I thought that's what God wanted. But I didn't understand the gospel. I didn't realize I was good. I was doing good. But I felt pretty stupid before God. I didn't think God <coughs> liked me. Did God love me? Of course God loved me. Jesus died on the cross. He loved me. But did he like me? No, I didn't feel God liked me at all. And so if you don't know you've got it, you do something to get it. So all the things I'm doing are in some ways to please God, put myself before God, that he'd bless me or be good to me or be a good Christian somehow. Either way, I didn't receive it through the word, through a promise. <laughs> I was working very hard for God. In probably one of the best church structures I've ever been in. And it killed me. Literally took me down to the grave. And um, so the doctor said you'll die this year. And um, I was very angry with God. And I just traveled, was going to travel the world if I died. I didn't die. And um, I was really angry with God. And then in, two, that was 2004, I crashed out. Uh, in 2009, by the end of 2009, I was so sick I couldn't travel anymore. And in early 2010, my only job was to be alive tomorrow. That was my only job. And so I was just having cold pressed juice and these, these baths that took the poison in my body. I get, you know, like Epsom salt baths. So I get into a clear bath and get out of a brown bath every two days. It was pretty filthy. And sorry, mum, but the whole house smelled like me. We had a two story house, and you walked in the house, you could smell like that death, that sick, sick person smell. The whole house felt like it. And um, I was really angry with God. And I told God, either you heal me or I don't. I'll die. If I die, I'll come and see you. Go, well, what was that about, bro? Like, seriously, what did I get wrong? Just tell me. I won't be happy. You could have told me. Maybe you did tell me. I just didn't get it. There's something wrong with me. There's something fundamentally wrong with me. I don't understand Christianity or I don't get a blessing. There's something faulty about me. Which is shame, right? So guilt is I've done something wrong. Shame is there's something wrong about me. And that's what I had. There's something wrong about me. That God doesn't heal me. I've been sick my whole life, served God my whole life, healed with other people, wasn't healing me. So there's something wrong about me that God just didn't like looking at me somehow. I don't know. And so you think there's something wrong about you, you definitely don't believe you've got it already. In fact, you believe you never get it. So you have to be on really good behavior so you don't have much money to spend so to speak, in God's capital, because he doesn't like it so much. And so I said to God, if I die, I won't be happy. And if you heal me, I won't be happy. If you heal me, like today, like bang, you heal, I'll be like, well, thanks for that, bro, you could have done that 20 years ago. I was really upset. But uh, Luke 6 says, uh, God is good to the ungrateful. And that's true. Because <clears throat> it doesn't depend on you at all. Correct. You've got a bad attitude, you're grumpy, angry at God. It actually doesn't change at all, at all. You can receive a miracle with accusation in your heart and anger against God and still receive a miracle. Because it's, not, it's got nothing to do with you whatsoever. In fact, if you are angry with him and upset with him, have lots of charges against him, this is a good chance to receive a miracle because you know you don't deserve it. <laughs> and you make a call on his character separate from all your understanding and all your interpretation of your life. All right? and, and all the evidence. We've got evidence. I was sick. I've got evidence against him. I've been sick for a long time, they got super sick, they got really, really sick. Right? So that's evidence against God. But that evidence doesn't actually change who he is. And I was angry with him, I was upset with him, but I could still receive a miracle. Because a miracle is to receive a word, receive a gift. And everyone can receive a gift, right? So I was listening to this guy uh, called Curry. Oh, yeah, you know, guys know Curry Blake. Lots of you guys know that guy, Curry Blake, John G. Lake Ministries. He was preaching over and over again about. I just listen to it over and over again. Because faith is a gift. It comes to your hearing. Just by listening. So faith's coming to you because if you're listening, the word's coming. So no flesh is involved. Okay? It's just a free gift. Okay? It must always be a free gift. Yeah. You can work very hard in cooperation with it. Paul says by grace, work harder than you all. So by grace, hey, work 20 hours a day. Like, read the Bible, learn Hebrew, do it all. But from the gift of righteousness that you have, the right stand before God. So Curry Blake's teaching me that I'm healed. Because if you're forgiven, you're healed. 
And over and over again, this the 18 hour teaching he does, over and over again. And then I believed that I was healed. Like, oh, I believed that Jesus healed me technically in the scriptures. I'm healed. And that as I understood from Corey Blake, if you believed, it manifests. I couldn't believe it anymore. He died on the cross, he took my sins, if you're forgiven, you healed, like uh, sin and sickness came in together at Eden, so sin and sickness disappear at the same time with Adam, you know, all those things like this with Jesus. And I still couldn't get healed, I'm still sick. Why? Because there's something wrong with me. This thing that I am just doesn't work. Do the miracle, just doesn't do the Christianity. It just, it just doesn't do it. Then one day I'm listening to Curry Blake, and after he's finished speaking, his microphone's still on, he's talking to someone. She says, what if it doesn't work? <laughs> Which is, you know, Carrie Blake, that's a brave question to ask. And, um, and he goes, if it didn't work, I'd die believing. Like, if I died, I'd, I'd die believing because Jesus did it. Jesus had his back ripped open, and by stripes I'm healed. So I would die even believing. I, I, so I wouldn't try and explain it by my situation. Because yeah. the word is true. Because that's truth. Facts are, I'm dying. Truth is, I'm healed. Facts change. It was Tuesday, now it's Wednesday. It was 22, not 22 anymore. Facts change. But the truth is always the same at rest. And as soon as he said that, I was like, hang on. I believe Jesus was whipped and by his stripes I'm healed. I, was, I do believe. It's pretty good news for me. It's like, oh, I believe. I can't explain this. And if I die, I'll die believing. Before I thought I was going to die because I didn't believe. There's something wrong with me. My faith mechanism just doesn't function or something. And then I realized, if I died, I would die believing. So I do believe. I can't explain why I'm dying. But I did do it. And it went to like a relational issue. Because Jesus did do it for me. And you can't tell me he didn't do it for me. And I knew then, because it's a miracle. I can hear a word. I believe it. And faith comes when hearing. And I believe that Jesus has back ripped open. And I was healed. And I would die believing that. Not happily. Not happily. But you know, I knew I believed and then, uh, and then it was Easter, and uh, my sister invited me to her house for lunch. And it was Easter Monday lunch. We, we get public holiday on Monday in Australia for Easter. And I just, I, I didn't have like um, pajamas as such. I was in bed six, 16 hours a day. So I just had clothes. <laughs> you wake, you sleep, you have a shower, don't have a shower. And my hair was shaved at that time. I was number one. I was, I was about... Uh, about 40 pounds less than this. What's 70? I was probably 100, 150 pounds at that time. Oh, way more than 40 pounds less than this. And um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I think I was, I was just got under 70 kilos at one stage at the end there. So, um, so I looked bad. I smelt bad all the time. My head was shaved. <laughs> and um, I went to my sister's, like, unbathed, just going to my sister's house. And I get there. And it's an like Easter lunch. You know, like you have a Thanksgiving dinner, Thanksgiving lunch. All right, <laughs> they're having an Easter lunch, and all these people are there. And the pastor from Australia's largest Baptist church was there. Uh, who's now my mum's pastor, actually, funny enough. And all these other people. And um, uh, we were sitting there, and that's that pastor. <laughs> I'm sitting there like this. Like skinny. I'm got everyone's eating like all the roast chicken, like in carrots, and I'm chewing them like. So, so they become liquid. I'm accounting to 18. I don't know why I chose 18. I, I chew everything 18 times, which is a lot actually. And then in celery, like 18 times to make sure it's so I can't put the digest anything. He says, So what do you think uh, God's doing through this sickness? I said, Well, he might be doing something for it, but he didn't give it to me. All right, remember I've been listening to Carrie Blake, so this guy's about to get it, right? <laughs> and he says he says, oh yeah, you know, you, we don't understand God. He, he does mysterious things and maybe he does some things to help you get closer to him. I was like, bro, Jesus didn't give this to me when he died to take away from me. <coughs> All right? He died to take the sickness away. He didn't give it to me. He goes, well, you don't know what, what God does what he does. It's quite mysterious. I was like, if sickness was a gift from God, then going to the doctor is sinful. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And the better the doctor it is, the more simple it is. And if you go to the doctor and it works... Well, bad luck, God, you have to make me sick again later to learn this lesson. And then, and then he's like, we, he doubled up. And then we went back and forth, and I was saying, you know, all the things I learned. And then, if sickness made you closer to God, then you were worship. You're like, Father, I just want to know you so much. Go, okay, here's some cancer. 
That'd be worship. Everybody getting cancer and worship. If sickness, God gave you sickness to get you closer, right? It's absolute madness, that theology. And we went back and forth. And then it finally ended when he was like, there is a lady in our church, and she died a slow death in the hospital. But through that, her husband came to Christ. So there you go. Like, point made. I said, well, if you walked in and healed her, she'd be alive, and a Christian, and he would be too. And that didn't go down so well. And we had a bit of a conflict. We're friends now, okay? And, uh, I didn't know. It's kind of come full circle, okay? We're, we're good with each other now. And it ended really tense. It got really tense. I sort of ruined the thing. And now I'm sick, like, head just like, like smelling and chewing and stuff like that. And he's like running the largest Baptist church in Australia. And he's got like the one track kids with him. Like, they look fan- yeah, they look fantastic bike. And I'm struggling. And uh, this is my mum's past I'm talking about now. But this is 20, this is 2010. So, in the past month. And, uh, um, yeah, anyway, um, that was Easter Monday. And we have a holiday called Anzac Day. And so, just I don't know what the gap was that year in 2010. But it was less than two weeks. Maybe, maybe a week later, I was in having my bath which I had to do to keep alive. So I'm doing medicine, right? And pharmacia, whatever, you know, uh, to keep myself alive. And then bang, the sickness left. Doof, just left. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I believe my heart and confess my mouth. But through no effort of my own. Yeah. Just through listening and listening and listening. I wasn't fasting for it. I was having medicine. <laughs> you know? I wasn't like, all right, goodbye medicine, I believe. Okay, I was doing all the medical practices I needed to do to stay alive, and I wasn't hang- I wasn't hang- happy with God for being sick. And when He did heal me, I wasn't happy. I was like, "Well, good." That's how pretty much how I felt. <laughs> Let's just get on with it. And even though I was ungrateful, I wasn't happy about it. I still get healed. It has nothing to do with me. I believe the word. Yeah. Make a call on His character. In fact, if you believe he's going to give it to you even when you're angry, that's even more complimentary. <laughs> but you just enjoy it less, right? Yeah. You know, the plane takes off and it lands. If you hate flying, it takes off and for eight hours, you're like freaking out that it lands. Or you're happy with planes. You believe in the plane and you have a good time that it lands. You watch, you know, all the movies that it lands. It's the same thing. Faith works. God, God works. God performs his word. If you believe it, believe he does, or you're anxious that he does, it's still going to happen. <coughs> so you can enjoy the process or not. That's okay. So anyway, so what I do with this healing is I went back to ministry and I burnt out. And I was really sick. And then I felt like God had given me this beautiful bars of this amazing healing, which I told everyone, put the testimony out there. I was known around the world. Put the testimony out there on Facebook, give my testimony, this amazing healing. And then three years later, I'm sick in bed. I felt like I had this beautiful bars and I smashed it. Like, and that's never coming back together again. Because no one gets healed twice, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a biblical precedent for that, <laughs> whatever. No, Jesus healed anyone twice in the Bible. Sorry, I lost it, can I have it back? So I thought, I dropped it, and it's never coming back. And uh, that's what started this journey. I realized, wow, I really fundamentally don't understand God. So I tried all the incremental things that weren't working. So I decided to see if I could live off a word. You want proof there's something wrong with you? Okay, I've proved there's something wrong with me. It just, I just, I just can't put it together. I'm the guy that just never works out for. I just, other people can put it together. I just can't put it together. And then I, was, then I got to Turkey. There's a long, few stories along the way. But I never got to, down to zero. I always had money. Like the old check came in, and then like a tax return came in. You know, and then, and then uh, all these, all these things were happening. Uh, and I never got down, so I just kept going, 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 going. I thought, if it gets to zero, I'm out. That's my rule, I'm out for myself, but I had to have some rule. I wasn't going to use my bank card, that's not faith in that regard. So, I was in Turkey, I was just listening to this guy called George Mueller, and George Mueller, I was listening to his audio book, of, of, of his autobiography, and he lived in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and he made an orphanage in Bristol, England. He had no money. And there's all these kids running around because uh, England had abolished slavery, so their economy collapsed. <laughs> and then all these kids are going everywhere because there's kids everywhere, there's no, no money. And the kids are getting put in jail, like full adult jail because no one put them. 
and they were using them in factories and had a life expectancy of about 10 days working in a factory but they were just burning through these kids because they were everywhere and he was like this isn't right and he had no money he said God I need to do something he found the penny he said right if God can give me a penny he can give me anything mm. he made a decision I'm never going to ask man as long as I live I'm going to tell God what I need and just keep moving forward you can read these stories it's incredible he ended up building these huge mansions which are still there now uh, and the, the, the king's um, architect designed everything and he got his lamb and have you ever heard the story of this orphanage where we had no food but they all got out and set the tables and everyone gets dressed for dinner with, with empty plates and all the cutlery and food comes out and then they just wait that, that, that's this guy that's George Miller and they never missed a meal like in 30 years and they put like, like 20,000 kids through the whole thing it's incredible and never asked for money once never told a man only told God and he kept saying once you see God's provision, like you will see that the God of the universe knows you. He says, there's nothing better in the world. Like, and I was like, all right, we're going for it. <laughs> and so I was in Turkey. I finally got my money down to zero dollars. There's a place called Izmir in Turkey. And uh, I was full of faith. I was listening to this guy preach and preach and preach. And, and faith comes by hearing. Yeah. He's saying he does the same thing for you. So I believe, it's supernatural. Like, I believe that from now on, if I just do what God asks me to do, like in that seed is everything it needs to go. So if God says go to Japan, in that word go to Japan, is my flight, is my rent, is my friends, just in that word. Okay? That, and that word alone, you just obey a word and everything's there. Okay? And I just saw it. It was so true to me that the whole world's made of word. The word governs everything. We know by faith that God created the world by his word. The word, it was just so clear. It was like physics to me. So I went to bed, woke up that morning with no money. I spent my last money on the pizza the night before. And then I got out of bed and I was excited. Like, what's going to happen? Okay. And then I felt this feeling like, hey, just stay and you don't have any money. Like, just stay in your room and fast or something. But, well, that's not faith. Let's go. I made a rule for myself. I will do what I normally do. What I normally do in Turkey is you go out and have breakfast. And breakfast is like just like, like um, apricot and yogurt and honey and a coffee, a very strong coffee. You know, I thought, I'm going to go do that. So I get, I go, wow, what's going to happen? How's God going to deal with this? He's going to give me some money. I'm going to find somebody in the ground. I'm going to get a text. Someone's going to send me some money. I'm going to meet an old friend. Something's going to happen. I'm walking, walking, walking. I go down. I walk down the hill like this. I get to the foreshore. I'm getting closer and closer to the cafe. I finally get to the cafe. I stand up for this. I walk up the cafe door. I get to the cafe door and nothing happened. <laughs> And then I felt, you idiot. What did you think was going to happen? And then, because uh, there was in uh, Turkey, they're like, hey, friend, come in, friend, oh, come in, come in. And the guy's like, welcome me in. He's looking at me, and I'm like this in the door <laughs> with no money. And then uh, the devil always overplays his hand, right? Because he has no chill. So I'm there, and like, this atmosphere came around me. And I felt like an idiot. I also feel like a kid. You know, a kid gets lost at the shopping center and like, I realize I'm all alone. I start to crumble. Yeah. So I'm an adult man. I feel like I'm crumbling. I feel like, like my dad is not here at the, at, and I'm lost at the supermarket. I start to crumble like this. I also felt really stupid. Like, what were you thinking? And all of a sudden, I knew, I knew too much at once. I could see myself calling my father, say, hey, Dad, <laughs> hey, Dad, you know that God you don't believe in? Yeah, he didn't pay for my holiday. Can you fly me home? Like, I had that thought. <laughs> I had all these other thoughts. And like, I just burned out in ministry twice. And now I've gone to try this. It doesn't work. Now I have to fly home with no money, live, live with my parents again as an adult, and all these things like that. I knew so much. But then this atmosphere came around me, and it was painful. And the only way I could describe it is, if you've ever scolded your hand, and it's just it's painful and it exhausts you because that pain keeps throbbing. And then you, when you put it under water, you feel like, oh, the pain goes and put it under water. I was in this pain of the situation of believing God and it didn't happen. Like I was all, I was all in, like all chips on black. There's nothing else. This is true. I have the faith. I see it clearly. And once again, it doesn't work for me. Guilt, I've done something wrong. Shame, there's something wrong about me. And it doesn't work for me. And this pain came upon me. It was a horrible, horrible place to be in. And I knew that if I said the words, it doesn't work, 
the pain would go. It was terrible pain. It was like, uh, like, like putting your hand under the cold water. Ah, oh, this pain would go. I'm thinking, why do I know that? And why is such a specific term? I'm sitting like this. I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? I'm just going, I'm blanking. So I don't know what to do. And uh, I thought, oh, God. God, like anything, anything. And something came to mind that I was with my parents back in Europe. When my dad left, he gave me 80 English pounds. He wasn't going to use it anymore. I have cleared out all my money several times. Like empty my bank accounts on purpose. There's no way that there's 80 pounds in my suitcase, right? That's the only thing I could think of. So the guys go, hey, friend, come in. I sort of walked out. I got back up the hill, still in this pain. I just like, just say it didn't work. Just say it didn't work. And it was like, like a rush. So, you know, what, who, what is this thing that's rushed? And so I got up to my room. And it's a tiny room, like, like big as this carpet here with a bed, <laughs> my giant suitcase. I gave everything, 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 everything. Looking at this $80, like, like, does God know my name? What price you put on that? 80 pounds. Like, I looking everywhere, everywhere, and it wasn't there. And it wasn't there. A rage came to me. But I'm watching myself in rage. And I wanted to hurt Jesus. And I knew, there's a very specific thing I knew. You think, why do I know something specific? I, go, I know why they pulled his beard out. I want him to feel the same pain I feel now. The pain of, pain of you abandoned me. You did not perform your word. You are a liar. And the pain you put me in, I want you to feel that pain now. And I really wanted to hurt Jesus. But not me. I'm watching me want to hurt Jesus. So, you know, you're not your thoughts. You're the one to observe your thoughts. And, once again, I had to say the word, see, you always do this, which means you always abandon me. But in other words, see, you always do this. And it's a horrible place. And now, I'm, like, an hour ago, I was at peak faith. <laughs> like, living the best Christian, my best Christian life now. Hashtag, right? And now, I want to cause... Jesus, physical pain. Now that is a big gap. I sit down, I'm like, like I'm going crazy, I don't know what to do. I'm sitting like this, and I've got on the bed, anything, anything. And I'm old enough that the TV stations you finish at 12 o'clock, I don't know if you, remember, you had that in America, when it closed off, we had a test pattern. Then it goes to that fuzz. I was doing that, like, like, I couldn't think of anything. I'm about to like renounce God. I don't know what's going to happen. Like I don't know. This is crazy. I'm in this pain, and it is a very painful place. I looked down beside me, and beside me was um, the Singapore Airlines eye patch case. Like they give you eye patch and a little pencil case. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I hadn't opened that yet. I looked down. <laughs> I reach out for this, the contents of this case. I, I pick it up, and even as I picked it up, I could feel the money in there. Like I didn't even wait. I unzipped it and there was 80 pounds in there, oh, right? Wow. And, the, and the thing is, the answer was always there. Yeah. So, uh, if you injure yourself, like break your arm, and then it doesn't set properly and it sets crooked, okay? What do they have to do? Reset. Break the exact same break again, yep. And if you get a deep cut in your body and it festers up, they have to take all the bandages off and make the exact same cut again to clean it out with a scalpel. So my break is that God abandons me or God doesn't see me. That's my accusation. And it didn't heal properly as a kid. <laughs> I kind of grew up with it. So God had to, <laughs> make, like, had to abandon me, like medically. <laughs> and then when he abandoned me, he could reset for the back. And the $80 was always there. He had to find that place, a deep place, okay? And uh, so that was the breaking of it. And then uh, that 80 pounds got me through about two weeks of traveling in Turkey. Like, it's crazy stories. And then I was finally in the center of Turkey in a place called Cappadocia, Cappadocia. And uh, I got down to zero dollars. I got down to zero dollars a few times, and something always happened. And the last night, of my last night there, I spent 10 days uh, in the in the desert there, you sleep in a hotel. All the hotels are built into cliffs, like you're like a cave. So I'm living inside a cave, but that's nice. You got a bed in the shower and everything. And um, 
and Persian rugs. It's very nice. And uh, I got rid of my last money, and I had to wake up in the morning and get out of Cappadocia. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I was excited about it. I sent my friend on the phone, Chad, hey, tomorrow something's going to happen. You watch. You know, someone will pick me up or I'll meet somebody. Something always happens. And this is how I'm going to live the rest of my life. Anyway, I'm walking back to, the, to my hotel after pulling Chad on the roof. I say to the guy, hey, uh, when's checkout tomorrow? He goes, oh, midday. Uh, great. He goes, yeah, just come and pay then. I said, oh, that's okay. I've already paid. He's booking.com. Pay. He goes, no, no, in Turkey, you pay at the end. You don't pay at booking.com. I go, no, no, I think I pay. I pay up front. He goes, no, 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 not in Turkey. You pay at the end. I was like, oh, no. I owe this guy, guy 10 days of accommodation, whatever it was. And now, like, this faith I had that something's going to happen, like, this is my fault. Or this is bad administration or something. And your faith wavers. And you don't know what to do. I go back to my room and think, I owe this guy a lot of money. And I didn't have money to skip town. You know, if, if I wanted to, I couldn't even get a bus ticket to the next town. I'm sitting in my bed and I go, God, my, my cave. <laughs> I said, God, I'm not going to pray. So I'll listen to my prayer and I'll monitor my prayer. Oh, that's a good prayer. Well, that was a good prayer. Like, I'll start listening to my own faith. And I'll, I'll probably pray myself out of faith somehow. So I said, I'm just going to make a call on your character. And my faith is not praying. My faith is going to bed. And I went to bed. I wake up in the morning. So I'm going to have some cool dreams tonight or something. No dreams. And I wake up. I check my laptop. And there was no money in my bank account. I was like, right. So when I had breakfast in the hotel, as included in my room, because I hadn't paid for <laughs> I went back to my room, opened the laptop, no money. I was like, ah. Oh. Right. You feel the pressure, the pressure coming again. And um, I thought, I saw, I thought I brought this on myself. It was my own fault for not reading the fine print or understanding what I was doing. Anyway, I went for a walk around Gorama, beautiful place. This is tunneled in. I came back and I checked my laptop, no money, 11 o'clock. And then, so I packed my bags, flew against the wall, and I sat down again. I opened my laptop again, I go, I can't even look at my bank account again. I'm just gonna look at my emails. So I opened up my emails, and Sam, I asked Sam about this, he doesn't have any recall of this, but there's an email there, it's from my dad. He said, hey Chris, how you going? Hope you enjoying Turkey, da, da, da. He says, Sam, has a um, mechanical um, garage door that broke. Uh, I, it cost 2000 to fix up and I bought it for him. So I'm gonna send you $2,000. And that happened in between me getting back and packing my bag. So that, that half hour, and because Australia to Australia, like it was, it was instantly in my bank account. And I cried, I, you were cry for $2,000, I cried for $2,000, very emotional moment. And I just realized, this is real. This is real. Like, God provides from his word. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And he is faithful. And he did that. So from 2013 until now, I've only worked for one and a half years of that. The rest of that's been living that way the whole time. And I've got lots and lots of crazy stories. But I can tell you, my standard of Christianity was not good enough during those 10 years to maintain the miracles. But he is. His character is. In fact, if I try to maintain it, I'll disqualify myself for it. I'll be using the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the coming to God with all my good behavior say, hey, which would make his great gift to me a wage. Which is very offensive. Because it must be a gift. It can only be a gift. You must never, ever, ever do anything for God in your life to receive something. That He wants to give through relationship. All sin is reaching your own hand to take for your own strength something He wants to give through relationship. And that can be good works. So the guy who's out doing drugs and sleeping around, and the guy that's at church, sitting up church, sitting up the the seats every week and cleaning everything can be the same God. Neither of them know the Father's good. Christianity is receiving a word. And the way you stay in that is you only stay, you only stay qualified for believing a word. Now you change. He wants you to, he's your father. He's going to, like, you have your father anyone, like, you will change that kid, all right? He wants you to change. He wants you to become like him. 
but from the nature He's given you. As a free gift because you believed a word. Abraham believed the word, it's a credit to him as righteousness. You believed the word, and that word became your righteousness. You were one with Christ. That's your nature. And I couldn't have achieved, I don't, could not have earned, observed any, I don't. Here is the greatest Christian, here, here is the righteousness of Christ. And here is the worst person that ever lived. Okay? And here's the righteousness of Christ, the worst person that ever lived. And here's the best Christian that ever lived. Right? Worst Christian, worst person ever lived? Greatest Christian ever lived. To deserve this, you literally have to live a life 10,000 times better than the best Christian ever lived. You can't do it. So he came down and put you here. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, receive that. Yeah. We try and do this between there and there. Let's go. Thank you, Jesus. And live here as a gift. Yeah. 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 Yeah.